serious. Let's go to your phone calls right now in this segment and the next. In the final segment, we have a special report filed, Lifestyles of the Drunk and Brainless, dealing with the general public, not knowing about the Bill of Rights or Constitution, shot right here in Austin, Texas, by the ever-intelligent and informative Leanne McAdoo uh, and John Bount. And TV viewers will be tortured by having a look at Leanne McAdoo uh, if you watch us on PrisonPlanet.tv and John Bound as well. Very handsome as well. Uh, so that is all coming up in the final segment with a bunch of news on the NSA, on the Oscars, on fake news, glamorizing not just Obama, but Rahm Emanuel now with Jimmy Fallon and all the fake news. Uh, media admitting, even mainstream media admitting it's all fake. But let's go to your phone calls. we got Bubba, Paul, Jeremy, John, Pam, James, you name it. Got a lot of callers calling about other stuff. We're, we're, we're talking about the Ukraine that could be the trigger for World War III. What is your view? Former, current military police, folks in Europe. I can usually give the number out in Australia or in Egypt and get some calls on an issue. Uh, I don't see anybody from Ukraine. I got Canada. Illinois, which is kind of like the Soviet Union, so I guess that is from kind of like 1982, from the Soviet Union. Illinois is a great state, but it's kind of run by the Soviet Union. Uh, from another dimension, we got Virginia, Texas, Arkansas, Texas. Uh, again, we got an international line, folks, or you can call the regular number, 877-789-2539. I want to hear from Ukraine or Russia, uh, you name it, anybody over there in Eastern Europe or into the Caucasus or into uh, the whole Rus area, 877-789-2539. A-L-E-X. Right now, let's go to Bubba in Virginia. He served 10 years in Germany, and we got active military. Paul in Texas wants to comment on Ukraine. What's your take on this, Bubba? Yeah, let's see. I was over in Germany for quite some time, um, starting back around 2000s, 2001. They actually start having different meetings for uh, how we're going to put bases over in, in different parts of what, what used to be former Eastern Europe. Your former Eastern uh, Soviet Union there, which is provocative, uh, right? Exactly. So we're putting places. We got uh, ASGs actually looking at putting uh, area support groups equivalent to uh, over in Poland. Uh, I know some guys have gone over there and some stuff. Uh, Kosovo, Yugoslavia, places like that. So yeah, we're basically you know we're, we're fringing right on the borders, encircling so, so. Russia. Yes, that's the the public plan exactly. is to bring Russia down by the White House. Yes, exactly. And then the whole thing going on with Ukraine. Um, just from things I, I've seen and read in, in history books and everything, to me this seems somewhat similar to when when uh, Kermit Roosevelt was over in Iran. You know, they, they got provocateurs in there. They, they go in there with a bunch of money. You know, uh, but basically they use Bechtel and other corporations like that, and, and George Soros corporations. They go in there and they pay a bunch of hooligans to start riots and carry on. And, and they don't want to join the EU. I can guarantee you that because. I can tell you, when I went to places like Czechoslovakia and stuff, they would rather take my dollars or they'd take drone over euros. They do not want euros. They don't want anything to do with the euros because they know it. it's bad news. It's going to crash. And they know it's going to bring down their economy. So those people in the Ukraine that are wanting to be over with the EU and be part of the become part of the EU, I'm telling you, they better look out because and they're, they're tying their own hanglessness. Well, very sophisticated points you make that – the majority of Ukrainians, they voted it down in elections, do not want to join the EU and be saddled with debt and enslaved. I mean, that's like wanting to join with leukemia or wanting to join with syphilis. I mean, it's 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 not a good deal. And so they just activate a bunch of thugs to blow stuff up. The government stands down. They take over. That gives the Russians a vacuum to come in. The word is they stood down to the Western powers by some of our sources the government did, who's pro-Russia, so Russia would have an excuse to come in. And that may actually be the double, triple cross in all this, and that's why it's such a mess. The problem is, historically, the Russians will not back down. And so, people like nuclear war? Get ready for it. I appreciate your call. It's not like we're led by, like, Eisenhower or something, or Ronald Reagan, folks. It's Barack Obama, who's busy raising old ladies' insurance prices. I mean, it's just... A sickening situation. Paul in Texas, active duty military. What is your take on all this, Paul? Uh, hey, Alex. A lot of things going on. Uh, basically, a couple of points and just something to, to think about. Uh, last week, our president said that he was going to shrink the military to the smallest size there's been since World War II. Um, next thing you know, Russia has decided that they would uh, make a, uh, an end run down through the uh, to the Crimea, to their deep water port. 
at Sebastopol. That's where they keep their all their carrier operations are out of that base. They don't have a choice. Uh, I mean, isn't it like when when the commies took over Cuba, the U.S. seized Guantanamo because their ships were there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the the interesting part of this is that entire corridor that they came down through to Sebastopol. All those folks speak Russian. They are they are pro Russian anyway, so that's I mean it's not even a big deal to those guys. Uh, the Ukrainians are in the uh, on the western part of the country where they actually speak Ukrainian, and that's where all the uh, pro, uh, pro sure uh, sure. And AP were. and Reuters is saying Russia invaded Ukraine. No, they didn't. They secured their military bases. And I'm not saying that's that's I'm not judging that. It's just a fact. They secured the Russian held area and their military bases. Uh, on the economic side. Most of the natural gas that Europe uses runs through the pipelines that run through the Crimea. That's right. And the, the next place they need to be very careful of is Moldova because the remainder of the pipelines run through there. Very well said. Where do you think this is all going? Uh, well, I think uh, Putin takes a lot of pleasure in punking our president, and uh, he's doing a real good job at that. Well, they just keep thinking everybody's going to bend over and the Russians aren't going to do it. Good point. Folks, you hear I want to talk to active duty and military. They know the ports. They know the names. They've done all the research. I've done it, too, but it's just good to hear it. The average American doesn't know the Earth orbits the sun, folks. The average American will ban water in a poll if they say it's for Obama. The average American will vote to have their power plant shut down and have their prices doubled. The average American would vote to have their head chopped off if it was trendy. But I talk to the military, they always know what's going on. Oh, I love it. Ugh. I didn't used to just gush about the military, but they always say, oh, military intelligence, what an oxymoron. I've learned more from military, regular enlisted people and non-commissioned officers and officers than I would ever learn from the establishment professors. And I'm not talking about all professors, like if they're in law or, or, in, or in electrical engineering or something. The general, though... You know, political professors are a bunch of joke hacks that don't know what planet they're living on. And me personally, I'm living in the 21st century in a real risk game. It's incredibly exciting. I'm not into football because I'm learning all the real players in the world and finance and banking and regions and What's happening in Nigeria and the Muslims in the north and what's happening in Transylvania and Romania and Bulgaria and what's going on in southern Mexico and what's happening in uh, in, in Japan right now uh, that adult diapers outsell um, baby diapers, not because the population is aging, which it is, but because it's so much fun and trendy to poop on yourself in Japan. I mean, that's that's mainstream news. I'm not even into stuff like that. It's just so amazing. That's another factoid. What else will I learn? Well, we'll learn more together coming up with your phone calls. He aligns himself with the truth, and it's time for you to choose a and his name is Obama. You're listening to Alex Jones. My love is in league with the freeway. My love is in league with a 50 cal. I'll shoot an old truck at a mile away with a tracer. I'll watch the fuel tanks explode into the night. Then I'll fire nine more rounds explosively. They'll all impact exploding in the night. Why did I deserve... To be born in Texas, it just gets better and better. There you go. I'm just making stuff up. That really happened, but making it up as I go on top of the wonderful voice of the golden god, as he's known, Robert Plant, bringing us in, broadcasting worldwide. What's that? What's that door song, the Texas Beat? You know, the Texas backbeat, it starts out with Jim Morrison going, yeah, it's a Texas sound. We need to find that. Just like Jim Morrison, the Texas sound, or Texas radio, uh, 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 Texas ranch radio. What is the name of that song? We need to come in at the next segment with that. I haven't played that in like 15 years on radio. Listen, we got a bunch of other news to cover in the next segment. I'm taking your phone calls. It is called The Wasp, but it's got another name. It's like Texas radio, I think. Uh, John in Canada, John in Michigan. Uh, James in Arkansas, Brad in Nebraska, Jeremy in Illinois. We're talking to former, current military, 
folks over in Ukraine, you name it, about what they think about the situation. I know it's not as important about a bunch of Botox, egomaniac people in their Hollywood that's going bankrupt, L.A. that's collapsing in the mayor's own word situation. And not that I don't like some of the movies, but give me a break. I'll choose what I like. I'm going to sit there and watch them all in their big narcissistic event. Let's go ahead and talk to John in Canada, recently retired military. Uh, what is your take on all this, John? Well, that's interesting, John. What else do you think, John? John is the equivalent on talk radio of disappearing ink. Uh, he's not there. Let's let him go. Let's go to James in Arkansas. Next caller, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hello, Alec. Hey, you say you're a military veteran, spent a lot of time in Ukraine. What's your take on this? Yeah, um, yeah. thanks for not being a sellout and telling the truth about what's going on over there. I'm trying my best. I've studied it, but I still don't want to be overconfident because it's complex. What is your take? Yeah, I spent pretty much 05, 06, 07 over there in Kiev, Odessa, Nikolaev, Zvestopol, Zaborozhye, Kharkov. Most of the Ukrainians, I don't believe they want to join the EU. Well, they voted against it openly, yes. Yeah, they... So George Soros is showing them now. That's right. They're used to more freedoms and liberties than what we usually have here. They're not going to like joining up with the EU. I think there are more, most of them are on the side of Russia there, I would have to say. Now, in the western part near Poland, there are, uh, you know, Nazi sympathizers. Oh, don't speak Russian, speak Ukrainian. And uh, Hitler was a good guy. Too bad he didn't. Oh, no. The uh, deputy prime minister is an, oh, literally photos of him hiling Hitler with images of women with blonde hair shooting electricity out of their hands. I mean, wow, I've never seen fascist iconography like that. I mean, they're really taking the cake now. Yeah, I hear you. But I guess George Soros is coming home. I mean, he was a top Nazi sympathizer in his area of, what was it, Romania. Yeah, I sure hope they don't, uh, the EU don't mess around or the West too much over there anymore. Uh, I would like to move Well, you know, there. Napoleon and Hitler messed around with Russia, and you know how that ended up. Yeah, yeah. My wife, she's from Peru, and she can't wait to go visit over there with me. Well, I hear and I see you know, the women and the culture of Ukraine are very, very nice looking ladies. Uh, and I hear they're very feminine. And of course, that's politically incorrect. But don't worry, the EU will put stuff in their water to make the women look like men and the men look like women. So they'll, 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 they'll get the Ukrainians. They'll get the five year olds wearing dresses and saluting Obama when they're done. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, very healthy over there. I can meet, uh, meet up with other Americans and believe how old they are, 45 or 60, and they look like they're 25. Or I have 30. talked to businessmen that go anywhere in Eastern Europe where they're off the GMO and stuff. They go, man, I smoked cigarettes, drank, ate like a pig, lost 40 pounds. Like the French are just eating like pigs, smoking, having sex eight times a day. Live longer, less cancer, because there's no GMO, folks. I mean, I, I just, it, they live like pigs, and they live longer than us. When my dad was growing up, it was chicken fried steaks, total stuff constantly, and there was no issues with weight. I'm telling you, GMO and rats makes them big and fat. I appreciate your call. God bless you. What an evil American. He loves freedom. Jeremy in Illinois, you're on the air. Go ahead. What's your take on the situation in Ukraine? Yeah, hello, this is Jeremy. Oh, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, we know. We announced you're Jeremy. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Are you former military? Uh, no, I'm not. I don't mean to be rude to you. Have you been to Ukraine? No, I've never been to New Ukraine. But see, but, but see, uh, I don't screen the calls. I said former military that's been over there, or active duty, or people in Ukraine or Russia. We want that intel. You got 30 seconds. Make your point. Yeah, you know, there's a global banker that's in charge of Ukraine now. That's right. They put an IMF and, uh, banker in there. That's right. Good point. Yeah. And uh, now the, the Russia has sent a, uh, a uh, military vessel down to Cuba, and I wonder if they're listening in to uh, tapping into America, I wonder. Oh, I think they're paying attention, yes, and they've got their own issues. I'm not, again, saying they're a bunch of angels. It's just that it's all, and I'm trying to be mean to you, Jeremy. It's just we're talking to, look, I haven't gotten one, and usually I can do this. This is very upsetting. If I kept this for a few days, the lines would be loaded with it. I want calls from Ukraine. I know most of the phones aren't working there, I've been told, in some areas or Russia, or Poland, or Germany. What is your take in Europe on this? We'll open the phones completely up, okay? 877-789-ALEX, dial your country code and use that, or the international line, your country code, access code, 512-646-1776.
512-646-1776. I want your take over there on this. John in Michigan, former military with Ukraine experience. Go ahead.